Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomo DNA uh, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a medieval Mongol Uyghur, a Uyghur from Mongolia. She is a woman who lived in the 8th century after the birth of Jesus. Let's name her Zofia for easiness sake. Uh, it's easy to remember such a name and it's a pretty common name for Uyghurs today. So even though it has a Islamic origin, uh, I'm just going to make it simpler because I don't want to guess what uh, medieval pre-Islamic Uyghur names would be like. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that she, her name was Zulfiya and she's predicted to look like this. She's predicted to have brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. Uh, so definitely darker eyes and darker hair and actually very high likelihood of snub shaped nose. So definitely snub shaped nose. For eye shape prediction, she's predicted to have East Asian or Oceanian eye shape, so definitely very East Eurasian eye shape as well. This is how I depicted her in the image uh, with sort of East Eurasian eye shape. And for hair shape, she's predicted to have straight hair at 94% likelihood. She also has two derived variants in EDAR, which is implicated in East Eurasian facial traits, uh, mostly shovel shaped incisors and epicanthic folds, as well as hair structure. Uh, she's got genotypes for darker eyes, hair, and skin in tier 1. Uh, according to her genotypes in SLC 24A5, uh, 24A4, excuse me, uh, she's got lighter color eyes and lower odds of heterochromia. Um, for MC1R, she seems to have, uh, she seems to not have any ginger MC1R variants, and she most likely had BH1 and doesn't have BH2 or BH4 or BH3. So definitely very dark eye color indeed. Zulfia has GG genotype and counts VAL slash MET variation, meaning VAL slash VAL genotype, or warrior genotype, higher activity of the comp enzyme, and quicker breakdown of dopamine. Individuals with this genotype have advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in attention tasks. Zulfia has GG genotype in comps RS6267 which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Zulfia has GG genotype in MAOA's RS6323, leading to higher MAOA enzyme activity. Since MAOA, just like COMT, is an enzyme that breaks down dopamine, this genotype leads to a decrease in dopamine levels. Zulfia has AG in DRD2's RS6275 variation meaning intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptors and average risk of schizophrenia. Zulfia has GG genotype in RS4648317 of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans, and leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. Zulfia has AA genotype in RS1076560 of DRD2, which is implicated in a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and an increased likelihood of alcoholism as well as decreased memory function. This is not a typical human genotype. Zulfia has CC genotype in RS5326 of DRD1, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. Zulfia has TT genotype in RS6280 of DRD3, a typical genotype associated with a slightly lower risk of OCD and intellectual disability. Zulfia has GG in DRD3's RS167771 variation, a typical genotype for most humans, leading to lower odds of autism. Zulfia has GG in MCM6 RS4988235 variation, which means Zulfia does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Zulfia has CC genotype in MCM6 RS182549. Zulfia does not have any derived variants for European lactose persistence. Zulfia has AC genotype in RS9273363, which leads to a slight decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Zulfia has CC genotype in RS7412, which means no APO2 alleles in ARG176 size variation of the APO gene and lower or in other terms, normal odds of Alzheimer's disease.
Now let's move on to the question of ethnicity. What is she? Well, she's very special in terms of ancestry. Why? Because she's quite different from the other medieval Uyghur samples from Mongolia. Uh, and she's quite slab grave. She's, she's quite uh, Mongol shifted and she doesn't have much Iranian or uh, step herder or whatever. Basically, she doesn't have much West Eurasian admixture. And I did not find any sources that claim she's anything other than Uyghur. So she is an Uyghur, but the way I understand it is she's some kind of a proto-Uyghur before mixing with uh, Indo-Iranian people in the steppe. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13 and you see the issue. This does not look like an Uyghur. Instead, this looks like a Mongol. This looks like somebody from Mongolia or maybe uh, even Southern Siberia, some kind of a Mongolic group such as Buryat. Uh, very little West Asian, very little Baltic. Uyghurs would also score quite a significant chunk of South Asian as well, but she's mainly scoring Siberian and East Asian, and in fact more Siberian, which kind of uh, hints at perhaps Southern Siberian or Buryat admixture instead. And she's closest to Buryats followed by Tuvinians, so here you go. Very Siberian in terms of admixture, closest to various Buryats, and actually getting modeled as a mixture of Buryat plus Mongolian. Not, not even a trace of anything... Um, you know, Iranic, not even a trace of anything like Iranic or Takarian, basically very uh, East Eurasian Siberian admixture, mostly Siberian result. This is what she scores with MDLPK16. I think this would be uh, kind of a good example of what proto Turkic individuals uh, might have looked like and what, might, what they might have scored. So there is a little bit of step, there is 6% step, but there isn't any Caucasian and there isn't any Indian, so it's definitely, there is no not even a hint of any uh, Iranian admixture here. It's a very Siberian individual, maybe a little bit step herder because of the 6% step, but that's as it, that's pretty much it. There is no BMAC here, there is no um, Iranian admixture. This is not an Uyghur, this is not a modern Uyghur, because modern Uyghurs are obviously very heavily Mediterranean, uh, very heavily southern or uh, basically southwest Eurasian in terms of ancestry. So they even look this. They even look the part. Like you can see, you can uh, in their traits, you can see the big noses, you can see the big eyes. Uh, occasionally, you, you can see the unibrows, right? These are all West Asian traits. But this this individual, this woman, definitely did not have any of these traits. This is what she scores with Pandian LK12. It's absolutely crazy the the lack of Iranic admixture in this individual. It's a completely Siberian result. Siberian, East Asian, Beringian. There is only 2% Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture in this individual. Do you know how little that is? Literally, Eastern hunter-gatherer from Karelia, the one I just made a video like uh, today, or no, not today, but last week, was scoring 10% Caucasus HG. She's scoring two. She's scoring five times less Caucasus HG than a Eastern hunter-gatherer. And what's crazy is I think she actually even has some step admixture because the previous calculators show a little bit of step uh, step admixture. So she does have step admixture, but it's just so little. She's very East Asian. You can see with ancient Eurasia K6, once again, the same picture. 83% East Asian, uh, a little bit of WHG, a little bit of Natufian, a little bit of ancestral North Eurasian, but a very overwhelmingly East Asian result. And uh, this is characteristic of modern Mongols and Southern Siberians or like Kalmyks here, but Kalmyks are Mongolic people too. Uh, this is not characteristic of Uyghurs, and this individual is labeled as an Uyghur. So uh, there is, once again, archaeological evidence suggests that this is an Uyghur culturally, but genetically this is not looking anything like any modern Uyghurs. So what's the conclusion we can draw here? The conclusion we can draw here is that either this individual was uh, culturally emerged in the Uyghur culture but came from somewhere else, or we can come to the conclusion that Uyghurs simply changed in terms of ancestry and Uyghurs of today uh, are not the same as Uyghurs of 8th century AD. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Uh, click the link in the description to open the Google Drive with this file. There is uh, every single genome file that I've made a video on is on my Google Drive folder. Uh, you can find all of them in that folder. Thanks for watching my video. Goodbye.